Uh, it is now my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, uh, Professor Elias Billiones. Uh, he joined Purdue also in 2014, uh, same time when, uh, when Martial came, uh, and uh, has uh, quickly established a predictive science laboratory, PSL, as he calls it. Um, his research spans the general interdisciplinary space of design under uncertainty, spanning a range of uh, uh, socio-technical systems. Uh, his research works uh, is based on uh, exploiting physical models to inform statistical and machine learning techniques in order to overcome inherent limitations of engineering systems due to the high cost of information acquisition and limited number of observation. Um, his uh, research work establishes new directions at the intersection of machine learning uh, and artificial intelligence with engineering systems. Uh, his research has also been funded uh, significantly by governmental organizations like NSF and NASA and DARPA, uh, but also by industry, um, in particular Ford and Facebook. Uh, and, uh, and some others. Uh, he's a natural collaborator uh, who's able to make diverse contribution and add value to a wide range of research programs. I think that's uh, really uh, very unique uh, about him. He's truly an interdisciplinary or, or cross-disciplinary uh, researcher uh, for us in the school uh, with, with many different um, collaborative efforts. So in addition to all of his research, he has proven himself as an excellent mentor of our uh, of his graduate and undergraduate students. Uh, he was presented with the Outstanding Faculty Mentor uh, in Mechanical Engineering Graduate Students Award and has engaged in uh, numerous undergraduate or has engaged numerous undergraduate students in his research activities and given them opportunities uh, through uh, Surf, as well as uh, our Bottomley Fellowships that we have in ME and uh, undergraduate research assistantships. Um, so, furthermore, his teaching efforts uh, highlight a significant commitment to developing state of the art educational models, effectively integrating novel educational technologies and tools uh, with uh, the fundamental tools. And as a result, he has been recognized as an outstanding engineering teacher uh, three times uh, by the College of Engineering. Um, so uh, uh, I would like to uh, mention here on the teaching effort at the end also uh, that is instrumental in developing our data science, uh, big data, data analytics course uh, for our ME students currently, which is a, it's a major undertaking. Uh, so with all that, I. Uh, would like to hand it back uh, uh, to Elias. Elias. I, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm moving back to the German pronunciation. I'm sorry about that. But uh, I really like to welcome him here, and I'm really looking forward to uh, his remarks. Thank you, Eckhart. And I'm very happy to be here, particularly with uh, during the same time as Martial. Martial is uh, was probably the be the f the first friend I made in the mechanical engineering department. Uh, and so I'm really, really happy to be uh, honored at the same time as him. Congratulations, Marcel. All right, so <clears throat> let me get started. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a few things about myself so that you, you get a feeling of who I am. And I would also like to take this opportunity to honor a little bit where I'm coming from. So I'm coming from Greece. And in particular, this little town, a little bit outside of Athens, it's called Aspropegos, White Tower. It's like 20 kilometers outside of Athens. And it's an industrial um, hub, uh, has uh, basically uh, some, uh, uh, basic, uh, how do you call it? It's oil refineries mostly and uh, steel uh, manufacturing plants. And it's, it's, really, it's actually a really bad uh, part of Athens. But it looks beautiful from away. And you see it has nothing to do, uh, not, nothing to, to, uh, to, it doesn't resemble Indiana at all. So there is a beach and there are mountains on the background 
It's always sunny, but it's also a little bit smelly because of the oil refineries. Uh, my uh, mother is coming from the north of Greece, a town called uh, Thessaloniki. So you can see at the top. My father is coming from the middle of the Peloponnese from a little village called uh, Lagadia. And this is where I go when, when I go to Greece during the summer, I basically go to that little village and I do my work from there completely undisturbed from anyone. The village has about a hundred uh, families living there. And this is my favorite Greek island. I'm not gonna tell you which one it is because I don't really want you to go there. But if, you, if you're really interested in knowing, you can send me a personal message and I may tell you. Okay. So this is uh, how I was educated. I started uh, in Athens at the National Technical University of Athens. And I uh, studied applied mathematics. And to be honest, I studied applied mathematics because in high school, I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know what mechanical engineering was. I didn't know what civil engineering was. I didn't know anything really. And applied mathematics seemed like not making a decision. <laughs> so it was, it was a little bit out of luck that I picked it. And, and because I didn't want to make a decision. And continuing not making a decision, I also did a PhD in applied mathematics at Cornell. And Initially, I went there, uh, wanted to study finance, but my arrival to the US coincided with finance and mathematics in particular. And my arrival in the US coincided with, with a crisis of 2008. And there wasn't a lot of excitement back then for finance engineering. It was actually blamed quite a bit. So I, I started experimenting with more engineering projects. So I was good in probability and statistics, and I, I happened to find, find, find my talk with my uh, PhD, later PhD advisor, Professor Zabaras, who uh, helped me understand about how you can how can apply what I knew about probability in engineering systems. I like that a lot. So I decided to do my PhD on that. And then I joined Argon. Uh, again, I work in the intersection of engineering plus statistics or physics plus statistics at the mathematics and computer science division. And I finally came to, to Purdue to, uh, as part of a cluster hire of, on predictive science and engineering. And so I came to Purdue to actually do collaborative work. And that's exactly what I've been doing so far. These are my intellectual heroes. And uh, so von Neumann, for various reasons, mostly uh, formulation of game theory and uh, the, the groundwork on decision making. Richard Feynman, one of the best uh, teachers of all time, is a person that I listen to uh, on my Walkman, on my bike during my high school years, I listen to his lectures. He did Zanes, uh, the one of the pioneers of the maximum entropy principle, Alan Turing, one of the pioneers of uh, AI, uh, IJ Good, my favorite statistician, and Judea Pearl, who's the person who has formulated uh, causal inference. And these are some of my favorite books. I like to read a lot. Uh, I don't have a lot of time anymore, mostly because of my toddler, but I like to read a lot of history and uh, so in focusing on particular in uh, prehistory. And I also like biology. So my, one of my favorite biology, uh, books on biology is The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins and pretty much all of Richard Dawkins' book. All right, so what is the mission of my lab as a so-called predictive science lab? Uh, in one sentence, it is to create artificial intelligence technologies that accelerate the pace of engineering innovation. So I want to help engineers do their job faster uh, without having to do uh, the dirty work of programming stuff and uh, basically accelerating what, what the way they design things, okay? And the way they bring data into whatever it is they're doing. Now, this is my philosophy, and this is the backbone of whatever I'm doing. 
So I develop communication channels between physics and data. So yes, I'm doing data science and machine learning, but I'm doing it in the context of a physical problem. So I'm using the physical equations, the PDEs, partial differential equations, ODEs, or other physical equations. And uh, this is all done uh, under the following communication protocol. So there's probability theory, which I think of as an extension of logic as the language of science uh, with an additional layer of causality expressed is either implicitly through the, the physical laws or through graphical models. And I use modern machine learning techniques to basically represent certain of the quantities that appear in, in whatever we're doing. All right, these are my overarching, overarching research themes. You'll see later on many projects, but these are the core problems I'm working on. So th there's quite a few things under the category of theory in form machine learning. High dimensional uncertainty quantification. So when you have a model uh, that uh, has uh, a parameters that are uncertain and these parameters are high dimensional, think about, let's say, not knowing an entire function. And a function is an inherently high dimensional quantity. So how do you quantify your uncertainty about functions? How do you propagate it through uh, the rest of your physical model? Filtering and calibration, uh, you, you are observing part of a dynamical system and you want to infer the entire state of the dynamical system. Perhaps there are parameters you don't know about the dynamical system which you would like to calibrate. This has applications in control, digital twins, Sequential design of experiments and simulations. So you have a fixed budget to do a certain number of experiments uh, or a fixed uh, computational budget. And you want to design your simulations or experiment in order to achieve a certain goal, like maximize something, estimate the probability that something happens and so on and so forth. I design algorithms that guide you into the selection of these experiments. Fault detection, diagnosis, and prognosis. You have a system that can break down a certain way. Uh, how can you, uh, by looking at central data, figure out when something has gone wrong and make predictions about how much time you have until you really have to fix it. This is very similar to the filtering and calibration, but uh, it has some nuances added to it. Uh, so this is one block of things I do. The other thing, the, the other block has to do with modeling human behavior. Uh, and I'm really talking about modeling the human as a disturbance in an engineering system. So in, in particular, in the context of my buildings applications, I develop models of humans interacting with the lighting system or with a thermal system, uh, humans making decisions about the thermostat set point, for example. Uh, and I'm also interested in humans as decision makers inside an engineered system. So once you uh, increase the complexity of your system at a certain level, you're going to have to introduce humans because the uh, current state of the AI does not allow for full autonomy. So you're going to have to bring humans to close the loop and make, have them make the difficult decisions. So how can you deal with that? So this is an overview of the projects I have ordered from more physical to more human. And we're not gonna go over all of these. I'm just gonna uh, mention briefly that at the very top, we have basically physics, design of materials. And as we go down, uh, we go to a little bit of engineered systems, electric engines, combustion engines, biomedical applications, and uh, we go to more, even more complex systems like extraterrestrial habitats projects about which, about which we're gonna talk about and um, smart building projects. And of course, you may ask yourself, do you really know all that stuff? No, I do not know all that stuff, okay? So I'm not an expert in pretty much any of these fields. What I'm an expert on is on bridging the gaps between physics and theory and data, right? So. I have developed the skill to understand the physics in a, a wide array of uh, fields. 
and I can help people connect with data and I can help them formulate decision-making problems and I can help them uh, quantify uncertainty in their models. All right, I have 35 current Purdue faculty collaborators, uh, which says a lot about the way I like to do my job. Uh, I have, uh, I'm collaborating, I have at least 14 from the mechanical engineering department. I'm working with people from electrical, civil, uh, aerospace. Uh, I have written proposals with many more. Uh, the good thing is that we haven't won all the proposals, otherwise uh, we'll be in trouble in terms of the amount of time we have to carry out the project. And uh, the, the two projects that I would like to mention is to give you a more concrete idea about how I'm involved. So the first thing is a Smart and Connect Communities uh, project funded by NSF, where I lead the data science and mechanism design efforts. So the, the goal of this project is to go to uh, communities, low-income communities that are, uh, some of them are subsidized and to design a thermostat, a smart thermostat that gives them information, gives them feedback that incentivizes these people to reduce their energy consumption. And the, the idea here is that because the, the, the amount of income these, these guys spend on energy is so significant that even a little bit of savings will have an impact on their quality of life. So what I do is uh, I work on on the part that designs what sort of feedback you, we should give them back. And this is a mechanism design problem, mechanism in the sense of game theory. We try to find which incentives uh, maximize a community goal uh, while at the same time, the individuals are acting sort of selfishly and maximizing their own uh, utilities. And the other project that I would like to mention is the Resilient Extraterrestrial Habitats project, where I lead one of the three thrusts, the Awareness Thrust, which is responsible for uh, using the sensor data to uh, develop an awareness about the state of the habitat, where is it right now, uh, how likely uh, it is, is it that things have been broken, and what are the actions we should take next to mitigate any issues. Now, let me motivate a little bit this uh, latter part and what exactly I mean by developing awareness, but I'm gonna touch upon what are the issues that we're, we're trying to address in, in the next five or 10 years. So I'm gonna use an example for, for that. Am I running out of time? No? Okay. Because I saw you, you turn on your camera, I was a little bit... Uh, uh we have a little bit more time uh go ahead but uh you know <laughs> yeah okay sorry uh let's say i have one minute okay how about that no problem no problem all right so let's keep this completely okay if you want if you're interested about uh learning more specifically about this project please reach out to me i'm going a little bit more slowly than i originally anticipated i'm on slide nine if you if you if you see i just went very slowly Okay, so I just want to mention my uh, graduate class, ME539, it's, gonna, it's called Introduction to Scientific Machine Learning. Uh, so far, I had 350 graduate students taking this class. So this is data science for engineers. It's basically uh, specifically using physical problems to teach data science. That's the difference between my class, for example, Stanley's class. I don't go as deep as Stanley. Uh, I, I try to connect to, to, to the level of my, I'm assuming that my engineers know about different equations and that they don't know about uh, probability so much or optimization. I'm also developing the undergraduate data science class. All right, I wanna thank my students. These are the people who did all the work past and current students. I want to thank my mentors. And these are not all my mentors. The very top are the, the Greeks. 
for professional plan to allow taught me probability, Kuchurilakis taught me about Bayesian statistics, Zabaras taught me how to uh, do basically the faculty job. Zites is the first person I wrote proposals with. Carava is the first person I had successful proposals with and we're continuing uh, our collaboration uh, in a full-blown way. Professor Dyke, my main mentor, she taught me a lot about how to, to, to do the job and, and also about how to mentor students. And by watching, Rhodes is also my other mentor, by watching him teach, I improve myself considerably. And finally, I wanna thank my, my family, my grandparents, my father and my mother on the, on the right here, my little brother, He's three years uh, younger than me. You see, you see us right down at, at the bottom. Who who taught me how to tolerate people that are different? My brother is is uh, is gay, and uh, uh, it was uh, he he helped me a lot to to understand a, a different perspective. So I, I knew that he was different ever since we were in this picture together. Ever since I was six or seven years old. And it was uh, great with, growing up with him and watching him develop into the man he, he is right now. And of course, my family, my wife and my son. Without my wife, I don't know if I could have done anything. She, she, she and I, we managed to be together from a distance for, for more than six years here in Greece, me here in the US. And uh, it's been a great journey and really without the stability that she had provided to me, I wouldn't be able to accomplish anything. All right, that's all. Great, thank you very much. Allah, it's a wonderful presentation, wonderful remarks. I like, uh, love the personal touch. Uh, uh, any questions uh, from uh, the audience for Elias, uh, you can either unmute yourself or write something in the chat room. I can start out, uh, right? Uh, I would be interested to better understand how you model humans. Right? I'm a, a kind of a thermal systems engineer and I model thermal systems, right? Uh, we have some uh, basic uh, uh, characterization in form of uh, first principle, to model the equipment, then some environmental inputs, and we get a performance of the system. But how do you model humans? It, that uh, seems entertaining to me. There is a first principle, <laughs> a first principle formulated by von no no Neumann in, in the 50s. So the principle is people maximize their expected utility. Right? So they have some sort of uh, they have some goals and the, some preferences and these preferences are ex expressed as a function over their choices and they try to, to maximize that objective. Now, the problem is that you need to go a level above that because, you know, do people really know what are their preferences? Question mark. Can they, even if they do, do they really, can they really maximize the objective? Uh, and you relax this a little bit and you go into uh, Simon's approach, which is that they don't really maximize it, but they are satisfying in the sense that when they find something that's good enough, they just make the decision. Okay. The, the, so they have an objective, they have some preferences, they don't try to maximize it perfectly, but they find something good enough, they make a decision. And, and that can be expressed mathematically in the language of probability theory. Uh, and, and that's how we do it. And at the end of the day, really, I'm not it's a matter of whether or not it matches the experimental data. It's a model, just like your thermal science models. And um, you could say that it, it does match the data sometimes. And there are very, a lot of examples where people deviate from this uh, behavior. Great, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? Who would like to chime in here? Uh, if, if yes, Avin, go ahead. No, non-technical question, but uh, <laughs> I did want to comment that um, 
you know, Elias put me onto a very nice wine and uh, I've been going back to it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so, you know, he's got a very nice, uh, but uh, also effective uh, taste in, uh, in wine. So I really appreciate that. Uh, great colleague uh, as well. I have uh, some uh, excellent suggestions for Greek wine that I have discovered. Not, not Retsina, I hope. Not Retsina, no, no. Ah, uh, okay, good. Top of the line, affordable. I'm not going to mention them here because they're in limited supply. So. so the thing is, you've got this favorite island that no one knows about. You've got the favorite wine nobody knows about. Uh, what other secrets do you have on the question? <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot tell you. <laughs> you you cannot uh, you should be careful with things like that because islands can be crowded very very easily so mm. you can go to Santorin if you want <laughs> okay no no no, no. I, too many people are, too many I people there no 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 <laughs> I have uh, one more question for you that may be helpful to others who are on the call, right? How do you manage collaboration with 35 different collaborators across Purdue? Uh, and I mean that, mean that in a serious way. Actually, I, I'm going to talk to Arvin about it. Uh, we might have a, should start an a award for like uh, the most type of collaborative uh, person in the college or so. You're probably uh, on the top of that list. Uh, but, uh, but I think, uh, right, we have all kinds of different characters, mentalities, and you, you do need to manage that. And I think there's some, some logic to that as well, right? There is. So you, you need to, to spend the time to understand their application and their perspective. So I do that. I will, when I, when I work with uh, Carava, for example, on buildings, I'll sit down and, and learn about buildings. I'll learn about the HVAC system, heating and cooling, the equations they use. Uh, I learn about how they design the experiments. I spend the time to do that. At the same time, I, I'm interested, instead of just doing my own stuff and write my theory papers, I'm interested in solving their problems. So I'm like, I don't, I don't come to a collaboration with a technique that I want to apply. I want you to tell me, what is your problem? What is your problem? And, and then we solve your problem. That's my, that's my attitude. Now, this has put me a, a little bit back on my, let's say, theory endeavors. But at the same time, I feel really happy solving actual problems, which is something I didn't do before. <laughs> because in all my theory papers, the examples are toy examples. 